what they said was lost will come back in multiples and it will not follow natural principles. Welcome to Winning Ways Experts with Andy Yossi, resident pastor of KICC God. We pray that as you listen to the message today, you will be challenged to live the victorious life that God has promised us. I want us to turn our Bibles this morning to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. For this morning's message, we're going to start looking at how to walk with God. How to walk with God. And that the series, My God and I. Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 to 27 is what I want us to read. This is going to form our foundation text for what we'll be sharing over the next few weeks. Genesis 5, 21 to 27. Shall we please read it together? Ready and read. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. 23. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Methuselah lived 187 years and begot Lamech. After he begot Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and he had sons and daughters. 27. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years. And he died. Amen. This morning I want to talk to us about how to walk with God. Because I believe it's a journey we need to look at. But my focus this morning shifts onto a gentleman that I find very interesting. In scripture. Not much is said about this man in the Bible. In fact, what we just read is one of only three references to this man in the entire Bible. A gentleman named Enoch. And when you read about Enoch in scripture, the strange thing is Enoch wasn't really known for some great provision that God gave him. You don't read about that. You don't read about Enoch being given some really wonderful elevated position in scripture. You don't even read about great manifestations of the power of God in his life. Nothing is said about those things. So we don't even know. But nothing is said about that. The only thing you read about him, apart from what we just read and one other one I will show you, somewhere in the book of Jude, a reference is made to Enoch. A reference is made to Enoch as having prophesied about the judgment of God that will come on earth. Somewhere in Jude 1, 14 and 15. I'm not, I'm not going to read that because that's not the, the core of what I want to share with us. But that was the only reference of him that you hear about doing something where he prophesies. But the sum total of Enoch's life seems to be what was actually mentioned there in Genesis chapter 5. And when you go to Hebrews chapter 11... When what we have come to refer to sometimes as the hall of faith, where the people who walked in faith were mentioned, reference is now made to Enoch in Hebrews 11 verse 5. And Hebrews 11 verse 5 simply says, By faith Enoch was taken away, so that he did not see death, and was not found, because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had 
his testimony that he pleased God. In Genesis chapter 5 that we started reading, I picked it from verse 21 because there's so many things there. When you go before verse 21, there's a pattern. A person's name will be mentioned, and then they will tell you who they gave birth to. Then they will tell you how many years they lived. Their father, they had sons and daughters, and they will tell you about the end of the person's life. That was a trend. And then suddenly it gets to Enoch. And he says, Enoch lived 65 years. And then he gave birth to a man called Methuselah. And he begot Methuselah, he says. After he begot Methuselah, after he gave birth to Methuselah, he walked with God for 300 years. And he had sons and daughters. And then so he says, so all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Then he goes back again in verse 24 and says, And Enoch walked with God and he was not. That's old King James English. Basically, he vanished. He was not, for God took him. God took him, so suddenly he vanished. He was not. Then he continues in verse 25 and says, Methuselah lived 187 years. He begot Lamech. After he gave birth to Lamech, he lived 782 years. He had sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. Now, note the difference there. Enoch is mentioned the years before he gave birth to his first, who happens to be Methuselah, is mentioned. And after that, they said, he walked with God for 300 years. And in fact, he walked with God so much so that God took him. And so at 365 years, Enoch is believed to have lived up to that time. But then, that's it. It doesn't actually say Enoch died. Because he didn't. It's a big question mark on that one. He didn't. So, he didn't re record it as he died. Then he moves on to Methuselah. Methuselah came. And what did Methuselah do? He gave birth. He lived for a while. He had sons and daughters. And he died. The 300 years that Enoch walked with God gained a special mention in scripture. Because that was a departure from the usual trend. What everyone was doing was come on the scene, live a few years, grow to the point where you can give birth, give birth, they record it, live a little more and die until Enoch came. And so in Hebrews 11, 5, he said that on the days that this man lived on earth, he had this testimony. If anything at all could be said about Enoch, he had this testimony that he pleased God. That was his contribution to the world. That by the time he left the scene, if anyone would write his story, the only thing they could write, the undisputed fact they could write was that this man walked with God. Early bird? Or not so early? This year, KICC Dominion Center is introducing the 7.30 a.m. service, followed by the insightful Inso Bible Institute at 9 a.m. And then the 10 a.m. second service. Now, whether you like to start your Sunday early or late, we have a service for you. Your drive for a better relationship with God this year has been made easier. Come over to the Dominion Center this Sunday for either the 7.30 or the 10 a.m. service. And God will make a champion out of your life. For any inquiries, please telephone 0243-690071. KICC, raising champions, taking territories. Never would there be a time I didn't know. As I looked at this scripture closely, I asked myself the question. 
if someone was to sit down and write my contribution, your contribution to life, will your story be like that of Enoch or interesting like that of his son, Methuselah? We all know Methuselah for living long. But I've got a question for you. What else did he do apart from living 969 years? That we don't know. That the scripture did not find it essential enough to tell us. By the end of this series, may it be said of you and I, not just because of a great provision that God has brought us, not because of some great exploits that maybe we have done, not because of some great position the Lord has elevated us to, but when the sum total of our lives is worked out, may it come down to the basic fact that you walked with God. Because that's what made Enoch stand out from the rest. At the end of it all, what would be said of you and I? Would it be that we'll go and write long stories about how we achieved this and how we did this and how we did that and miss the most essential bit. For 300 years, the only thing that was said about him was he pleased God. He pleased God so much that God exempted him from death. But the scripture tells us, we see in Hebrew 9.27, that it was appointed unto man once to die. And after death, judgment. Minus Enoch. He didn't die. Because God suspended that rule. When he saw him, he pleased him so much. One day he said, come for a fellowship. When he came, he didn't go back. God took him. He took him on a walk. And decided there's no point. Let's continue our fellowship. It's great for God to bless us with things. It's great for us to be able to do exploits. It's great for God to elevate us. But after all is said and done, may it be said of us that we walked with God. May even our enemies agree to that fact. That we walked with God. Because that was a legacy worth living. And that is why scripture noted it. And it's interesting because when you have time, you read the rest of that chapter, you find out. After Enoch, it's almost like things then went back to normal. Methuselah comes and does his bit. Lamech continues. Then he gave birth to Noah. And then that's another man who came to try and start a new trend. Every now and then one will show up. May you not follow the usual trend. At the time when Enoch was born, people just did not know God. You know it because you find out, of course, later when Noah came, Noah's assignment was basically to be in the middle of God's plan to restart everything because sin had taken over. But in the midst of that, it is said of Enoch that Enoch walked with God. What does it really mean when he say that walking with God? He pleased God. For us as 21st century Christians, what does it really mean when we say walking with God? You see, when one is walking with God, there are a number of things. That would have happened in your life. Firstly, if you're walking with God, the prevailing power of sin in your heart would have been broken by the Spirit of God. That prevailing power, that prevailing power that dominates every man who doesn't know Christ, that power would have been broken. When you walk with God, you are a person who 
has been reconciled back to God. Through Adam, sin entered the world. But also through the last Adam, Christ himself, you and I have been reconciled back to the Father. So if we are going to walk with God, it means we are now back on talking terms with the Father. When someone is walking with God, we are talking about someone who has a living relationship, a living communion with God. A living communion with God. And fourthly, when I talk about walking with God, take note, walking with him. To walk with him implies we are making progress in our relationship with him. Because walking denotes something that is progressive. It's not Someone who walked with God and stopped. Because the beauty of Enoch is that Enoch started well and finished well. It's a tragedy for someone to start well, walk with God. And a time comes when you sit back and say, oh, those were the days. May that not be your portion. Because your walk with God. In fact, the value of your work with God is determined at the end, not at the beginning. Amen? So it's not, oh, those days, we used to do great things for God. Those days? What about these days? And what about the days to come? Enoch finished well. Because he learned how to develop and maintain this relationship. And that is the subject of this series I want us to look at. And the reason why I also called it my God and I is this. When I talk about our relationship with God, I'm talking about your personal relationship with the Father. Not the church's relationship. Not anyone else's relationship with God, but your personal relationship with the Father. Because that is what makes the difference. Amen? That is what makes the difference. Yes, we all belong to the same church. We all belong to the same family. But at the end of the day, your relationship and my relationship with the Father is what will make all the difference. You've heard me say this before. When you show up in heaven, you don't flash your membership card. Not really. The church is a training institute to train you to go out there and do what God, through Christ, has enabled us to do. But that's all it is. That's all it is. Is to help you, direct you so that you know that you ought to have a walk with the Father himself. And that is why I called it my God and I, not our God and us. Because in this series, I want to talk about you. Please tell the person next to you, they are going to talk about you. How to walk with him. How to work with him. There are certain fundamental things I want to come back to in this series. Certain things that you and I, I believe, may even know. But it's high time we put the emphasis where it ought to be. How do we walk with God? How does a Christian maintain such a walk with God? Number one. To do that, we have to live in the word of God. We have to live in the word of God. We have to live in the word of God. You see, we maintain our relationship. We maintain our walk with God by studying his word. By studying his word. There are no shortcuts to certain things. And the earlier, as 21st century Christians, we discover that the better. We maintain our walk with God by studying his word. 1 Peter chapter 2 tells us from verse 1 to 3. 
It says, therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, come on, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you will do what? You may grow thereby if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Take note, that whole bit is one whole sentence. Therefore, it says, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, you should desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. In other words, having laid aside all those things you spoke about in verse 1, if you just stop there, what will happen is you will remain a baby Christian forever. He says, therefore, having laid aside those things, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. It is important for us to understand that our testimony should not just be, oh, bless the Lord. I used to be an alcoholic. I'm no longer an alcoholic. Praise God. I used to smoke. I no longer smoke. Praise God. What next? You have laid aside those ones. What next? As newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of word that you may grow because it's a progressive thing. Is someone with me? It's a progressive thing. It's great to be born again and say, oh, you know, my life was messed up. And I walked into church. There was an altar call. I accepted Christ. Praise God. And we'll celebrate with you. After the celebration, what next? Early bird? Or not so early? This year, KICC Dominion Center is introducing the 7.30 a.m. service, followed by the insightful Kinsway Bible Institute at 9 a.m. And then the 10 a.m. second service. Now, whether you like to start your Sunday early or late, we have a service for you. Your drive for a better relationship with God this year has been made easier. Come over to the Dominion Center this Sunday for either the 7.30 or the 10 a.m. service. And God will make a champion out of your life. For any inquiries, please telephone 0243-690071. KICC, raising champions, taking territories. Because if you are going to walk with him, it's not just a one-off event. It's a lifetime event. Amen? It's a lifetime event. He says, desire the sincere milk so that you will grow thereby. Why? Because the growth comes through the word of God. The growth comes through the word of God. I must say one or two things that some of us may find slightly worrying. But I want you to understand. Biblical principles are biblical principles. I haven't lived that long on this planet. But at least I've been around for a few decades. I have never seen anybody grow spiritually just by other people praying for them. Never. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any. And I've been born again since 1981. I haven't seen any. Any growth that is going to be coming out of your life will come through you doing something. And it starts with the word of God. Are you with me? Psalm 119 tells us. Psalm 119 in verse 104 and 105. Psalm 119 is a very long chapter. The longest you can find in the word. Huge psalm. 104 and 105 says, therefore your precepts, through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Then he says in 105, which we are very familiar with. He says, your word is what? A lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In other words, the word gives me direction. The word gives me illumination. The only reliable thing that can direct you in your walk with God is the word of God. 
The only reliable thing that can direct you in your walk with God is the word of God. Not your emotions, not even what the pastor is saying. It is the word of God. Emotions are not very reliable things. If your walk with God is dependent on your emotions, you will not survive it. Because there are times when you will not even feel. Have you ever gotten to a point in your life when you felt God has abandoned you? Let me see by hand if anybody has ever got to that point before. You actually felt God has abandoned you. I can add my leg to it as well. For emphasis. It happens to all of us. In fact, if you want to know, spend some time reading the Psalms. When you read some of the things that David and the Psalmist puts down, you look at it and think, what is this person blaspheming? How have they increased that trouble with me? Many are those who say of me, there is no help. And you're thinking, well, what's wrong with this man? Lord, why have you left me? By the end of the psalm, he says, by thou, O Lord. All he's doing is that he's showing us, he's giving us an insight into what he's going through. But you see, if you are hooked on the word, even when the devil punches you, you land on the ropes and then you bounce back. Because the righteous may fall seven times, yet something in that righteous will cause him to rise again. It's the word that makes the difference. It is not your emotions. This walk cannot be sustained purely based on your emotions. Some of us will get to a point in our walk with God where people will hate you because of what you believe. Oh, yes. People will even look at you and insult you. People will look at you sometimes and tell, I'm surprised at such an intelligent man like you. That you are a Christian. Oh, yeah. In some parts of the world, we have already arrived there. And the earlier we understand this thing, the better. That is why our walk with God cannot be based on anything else but the word of God. If you move it to anything else, you are going to have problems. Seriously speaking, you are going to have problems. You cannot use psychology to sustain yourself in your walk with God. It's good for all of us to study. I always encourage people, when you have the opportunity, go for it. But understand that when it comes to your work with God, the only reliable thing that will give you direction is the word of God. Am I making sense to someone? Paul writes to Timothy. And he says this in 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 13 to 16. I like the way he, he just lays these things out for him. 1 Timothy 4, 13 to 16. It says... Till I come, give attendance or attention to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Verse 15. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Then he says in verse 16, Take heed to yourself and to their doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you shall save both yourself and those who hear you. And the people of God shall say, Thank you for watching Winning Ways Express. To request for this and any other messages, please contact KICC Ghana, Plot 71, after the Coca-Cola roundabout on the Spintex Road.